the end of another season. The showdown to see who would reign supreme on water. The culmination of a year of perseverance, hard work, commitment, and drive. The dedication, the heartache, and the joy of victory. The 2018 UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship returned to Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates for the final round of 2018, where the world champions in four categories would be decided. Ski Division GP1, Ski Ladies GP1, Freestyle and Runabout GP1. In this program, we bring you the Runabout GP1 and Freestyle. There were three motos to race in each category with a maximum 75 points up for grabs as riders from all over the world gathered for the Grand Prix of Sharjah in their quest for the 2018 world title. Sharjah is a unique emirate in the UAE with a very different feel to the glitzy hustle and bustle of neighboring sheikhdoms. This is a place that puts tradition, heritage and culture in the spotlight. A city that reflects the rich Arabian Islamic influence that has shaped Sharjah, evident in the multifaceted and diverse architectural gems that the city has to offer, spanning various cultures and geographies. Sharjah has an intimate relationship to the surrounding environment, from long stretches of sunny, sandy beaches to the haunting beauty of the desert and its unique wildlife just a drive away, all of which hold pride of place in local Sharjah culture, forming an integral part of their lifestyle. This Middle Eastern gem provides the perfect traditional final stop on the UIM ABP tour as the world's top riders gather along Sharjah's dazzling tower-lined corniche surrounding Khalid Lagoon for the Grand Prix of Sharjah, a week-long water celebration in which Aquabike motos were raced alongside the UIM F1H20 and F4 Championship as one of the world's most renowned water festivals came alive in a mix of adrenaline and elegance. Now let's see what happened last round in Olbia, Italy. At the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean in Olbia, defending world champion Yusuf Al Abdul Razak of Kuwait had a nine point advantage atop the world standings after his round one win in Gallipoli, and he was the favorite going into Moto One. Early race leader and pole position holder Marcus Jorgensen broke down in Moto1 and then Rashid Altair lost his lead a few laps later as Jeremy Perez overhauled the Emirati to take the lead with Yusuf Al Abdul Razak also climbing up the field overhauling Altair and chasing Perez for the Moto win. But Jeremy Perez was too fast and too strong on the day. A first moto win for the Frenchman in three years, Al Abdul Razak runner-up and Hungarian Georgi Kasha third. In Moto2, Perez had pole, but both he and Al Abdul Razak had a poor start, while third place Georgi Kasha flew out into the lead, storming down the starting straightaway to the hole shots and never looking back, with Rashid Altair behind him in second. But Jeremy Perez found his opportunity in the alternate course, the Frenchman passing both Altair and Al Abdul Razak to move up into second behind Kasha. Kasha closed out the race with the win, but a post-race 15-second penalty for a race start line infraction gave the Moto2 win to Perez. Jeremy Perez is the Grand Prix of Mediterranean winner. Grand Prix runner-up was Yusuf Al Abdul Razak and third place yet again for Georgi Kasha. That double Moto Grand Prix win moved Jeremy Perez to the top of the world standings after Obia, just one point up on defending world champion Al Abdul Razak, with Georgi Kasha a solid third, 12 points ahead of fourth placed Lars Ackerblom. In the freestyle, Emirati ace Rashid Al Mullah was in incredible form, going for an incredible 10th consecutive Moto and fourth consecutive Grand Prix win in Obia. He produced a masterful display of aquabatic brilliance that once again left the field behind and the crowd applauding for more as he took the double moto win, runner-up in third place going to Italians Roberto Mariani and Alberto Camerlengo. The Grand Prix of Sharjah Circuit on Khalid Lagoon is a tight and technical course that was shorter than usual, meaning the alternate course would be crucial for passing. Yeah, it's always rough in Sharjah, the waves bounce back from the wall, so uh, with 20 jet skis out there, it makes it really good anyway because of the rougher conditions, and then it isn't all about the power, it's obviously about the driver also.
The big rivalry in runabout GP1 is between defending and four-time world champion Yusuf al Razak of Kuwait and veteran Frenchman Jeremy Perez. Coming off a brilliant double moto win in Olbia, Jeremy Perez led the world standings going into Sharjah and he has never been closer to the world title that had eluded him year after year, having come so close on several occasions. Yes, yeah, so I'm coming in Sharjah first on the overall. Uh, I'm happy about my two first race in Italy. I want to win uh, this world championship, I want to win the race here in Sharjah. But no, it will be easy with uh, Youssef Vandurazak that is fast, will be a big, uh, big final. Him. Naturally, Perez's biggest rival would be Al Abdul Razak, the Kuwaiti just one point behind Perez with three motos and a maximum 75 points for grabs. Anything could happen. But Al Abdul Razak would have to battle through a dislocated shoulder injury that had not yet fully healed. Last week, yeah, we had the race in Thailand and I hit a wave, a big wave on a turn and it dislocated my shoulder. So that's really bad for me, but uh, I've been resting it since. Since then, till today, I'll do the first test in the practice to see how it feels. Me and my, my mechanic will sit and decide like, how, how strong we can push and we have to be smart. Al Abdul Razak went into Sharjah with the confidence of knowing he had won the last three Sharjah Grand Prix, while Perez has had a lackluster record on Khalid Lagoon. After that brilliant run in Olbia, Georgi Kasha would not be running, having received a four-year ban, but Swedish former world number three Lars Ackerblom, who was fourth in the world standings going into Sharjah, would be there to shake things up and see if he can't make a surprise bid for the world title or at least a year-end podium. Another Swede, Johan Johansson, has also been in form, earning points in every moto and in the running for a year-end podium. The field is talent-packed in Sharjah, with the likes of Italian veteran Lorenzo Venaglia, British ace James Bushel, Andrei Wisniewski of Poland, and Jan Jensen of Denmark, to name a few. Not to mention local riders Rashid Altair and Mohamed Mohsin flying the UAE flag. In the first of three motos in runabout GP1, world standings leader Jeremy Perez had pole position after his qualifying win with Yusuf al Abdurazak in P2, then Lars Ackerblom P3, followed by Emirati Rashid Altair in P4, then Anton Pankratov P5, Samuel Johansson P6, Roberto Alexander in 7th, and Mattia Fracasso in 8th. Having completed their parade lap, greeting crowds and waving their national flags before the race, the 20 riders were ready for the rolling start on Khalid Lagoon. All eyes on the intense rivalry between Perez and Al Abdul Razak as the riders await the start of the race. Moto 1 begins, Jeremy Perez is very fast off the mark on the opening straightaway to the hole shots, leading the field into the circuit on the opening lap with Yusuf Al Abdul Razak right up there behind him, then Lars Ackerblom as they come around the first turn. Jeremy Perez is first to the alternate course. Behind him is Lars Ackerblom with Al Abdul Razak losing pace, dropping to fourth. Perez leads, then Ackerblom with a great start in second position. Spaniard Roberto Alexander in third. Al Abdul Razak dropping to fourth. Then former world champion Mattia Fracasso of Italy is fifth. With just one point separating Perez and Al Abdul Razak and three motos to race in Sharjah, these two know that every single position and every point will be crucial. Al Abdul Razak is eager to pass Alexander, pushing very hard, but he misses a buoy, meaning he has to go for the black penalty buoy, and that costs him yet another position as Al Abdul Razak drops to fifth, passed by Mattia Fracasso. The Kuwaiti four time world champion drops to fifth in these choppy, churning waters. On the next lap, Roberto Alexander also has to take the black penalty buoy, and that moves Mattia Fracasso up into third position. Behind Fracasso, Al Abdul Razak is going all out to try and pass Roberto Alexander and move up into fourth. Al Abdul Razak's persistence and determination pay off as he overhauls the Spaniard, moving into fourth and now setting his sights on Italian former world champion Fracasso. Out in the lead, starting his Sharjah Grand Prix campaign perfectly, is Jeremy Perez with clear waters ahead. But the hard-charging Swede Ackerblom is behind him, and Perez has no room to relax, also knowing Al Abdul Razak must be on the warpath. Ackerblom has to take the black penalty boy on lap five, and that gives Mattia Fracasso the opportunity he was looking for to move up into second as he zips past the Swede. Down that straightaway, Ackerblom drops to third with Al Abdul Razak coming up strong from behind. Further back, former world number two James Bushel is trying to move up the ranks from seventh. The British rider manages to overhaul Pankratov to move up to sixth. 
Then he moves in on Roberto Alexander, slipping past the Spaniard, whose slide continues. Alexander down to six as Bushel moves up into the top five. Jeremy Perez out in the lead, but there are a lot of hard racing, fast riders behind him with positions changing constantly. Meanwhile, former world number three Lorenzo Benaglia of Italy and Portuguese rider Cristof Agostinho are also racing hard. They move up into seventh and eighth positions respectively. Problems continue for Roberto Alexander, the Spaniard losing power and dropping all the way back to 15th. Mattia Fracasso is in second position. He enters the alternate course riding tight, but he doesn't see the threat building behind him as Al Abdurazak passes the Italian to move up into second, Fracasso dropping to third. Tragedy for Fracasso, his excellent race comes to an ignoble end. He is out and he is furious. With Fracasso out, Ackerblom moves up into third, but Jeremy Perez does not care. He's on course in the last lap for a start to finish Moto 1 win in Sharjah. Al Abdurazak goes all out, using the final alternate course opportunity to try and pass Perez, but Perez is too fast, too good, too far ahead. Jeremy Perez holds off the Kuwaiti and brings his ski home for the Moto 1 win. What a race for Perez. That's his third moto win in a row. Runner-up Al Abdurazak and third place goes to Ackerblom. That opens Perez's world standings lead over Al Abdurazak to six points. A small lead, but crucial nevertheless for the Frenchman. Fourth place goes to James Bushel, then Benaglia. Good finish for fifth in Moto 1. Augustinho sixth, nine points for Wisniewski in seventh, then Johan Johansson, Schick, and Samuel Johansson completing the top 10. Uh, the race was good. Uh, I didn't see uh, Youssef come back to me, but when I see him, I will give a little bit more. And uh, I stay first and uh, I win. I'm happy. Moto 2, Al Abdul Razak with his back against the wall, needing to beat Perez if he's to even the fight and take it to the last moto. Jeremy Perez has pole position. The starting straightaway will be crucial, and it's going to be a real tight fight to the whole shots. And they're off. Moto 2 begins as Jeremy Perez flies out ahead with Al Abdurazak and Ackerblom to his left. Perez pulls ahead, opening a few skis lengths between him and Al Abdurazak and Ackerblom as the field of riders goes through the hole shots and around their demarcation buoys. The trio of riders out front go head to head on the long straightaway, led by Perez into the alternate course as Perez opts for the blue track and Al Abdurazak takes the green. Al Abdurazak knows these early laps are where he needs to catch and pass Perez before he can get away and build a lead, but Jeremy Perez makes no mistakes out front, emerging with lead intact. But Al Abdurazak right on his tail and Ackerblom coming out in third. Behind the top three, Roberto Alexander is up in fourth with another solid start. Then it's UAE rider Rashid Altair in fifth. Tough break for 2011 world champion Mattia Fracasso. The Italian is tugged off the course. A battle is heating up for fourth place as Roberto Alexander is chased by number five Rashid Altair in fifth. And behind them is former world runner-up James Bushel. But then Altair slows down, he has a problem, and Alexander moves back up into fourth with Bushel behind him moving up into fifth. But Bushel is not letting the Spaniard out of his sights, looking for a way to get past him. Bushel does not give up, and on lap five he finally gets past Alexander. James Bushel moving up into fourth and setting his sights on the lead peloton of Ackerblom, Al Abdurazak, and Perez. Alexander's slide continues, this time the Spaniard passed by Chinese rider Wu Ronghua, Alexander now down in sixth. Another breakdown for British rider James Bushell who was racing in fourth position, what a shame. And then Lars Ackerblom is also out of the race in lap 10, he was in third position and as the Swede is tugged off the course that moves Jan Jensen into third position with Wu Ronghua up in fourth. But there was no stopping Jeremy Perez. The Frenchman raced to perfection, holding off Al Abdurazak to clinch a crucial win. With Al Abdurazak finishing second, Perez opens his lead to 11 points over the Kuwaiti, and Al Abdurazak's hopes for a fifth world title have taken a big blow. It would take a miracle now in Moto3 to pull it off.
I'm very happy. Now I'm uh, 11 point to lead this championship. So I have to, uh, to, to do a good race tomorrow. As for Perez, he knows he's now closer than ever to the happy ending he's dreamt of for the last 10 years. Third place in Moto2 goes to Jan Jensen with Wu Ronghua finishing fourth, his best result in 2018, then Ben Naglia fifth, Marcus Schick of Austria sixth, and Johan Johansson seventh. Despite the breakdown, Lars Ackerblom is still on track for a year-end podium. The man who stands head and shoulders above the field in freestyle is, of course, world standings leader Rashid Al Mullah. The Emirati rider has won all four motos in 2018 and four Grand Prix in a row, and he will be the clear favorite. But first, he has to overcome the likes of Italian veteran and former world runner-up and European champion Roberto Mariani of Italy, the talented Portuguese rider Paulo Nunes, who's been in great form of late, Russian Alexander Kuramshin, another Italian veteran Alberto Camerlengo, and local rider Ali Abdeljalil. Runner-up to Al Mulla in all four motos from the first two rounds of the year, Roberto Mariani went out there in Sharjah looking to wow the crowds with a dazzling show. The Italian veteran adding some new tricks to a tried and true repertoire that was capped off by his signature Superman. Mariani's fellow Italian Alberto Camerlengo was in good form. With a good flow to his routine, the crowds enjoying the show on offer. Locals got behind a new talent on the UIM ABP Tour, Ali Abdul Jalil of the UAE, the Emirati rider showing what he could do out there, proving he could compete on the international circuit as he produced a solid routine, no mistakes, and a good array of solid backflips, 180s, barrel rolls, and 360s. <laughs> Alexander Kuramshin reached some good points, impressing judges with his variety and also creating some good flow along with chemistry with the crowd which is also very important in freestyle. Portuguese rider Paulo Nunes took things up a notch however, wowing crowds and judges alike. Great tricks, excellent execution, good variety and incredible power off his ski to get the kind of air that enabled him to get the most out of his tricks. Nunes shined, leaving the other riders behind in all three motos. But there was still one rider to go, Rashid Al Mullah. The crowd favorite, local hero, Emirati rider Rashid Al Mullah received a standing ovation as he went out and he did not disappoint his compatriots. Al Mullah seems to have more power than anyone in that motor and ski and he knows how to control and tame it, producing a flourishing variety of incredible moves topped with brilliant consistency, form, aesthetic brilliance and crowd chemistry. It was just time to sit back and enjoy as he put it all out there in three motos, earning 90 points in all three to win yet another Grand Prix title with a clean triple moto sweep. I feel so happy since uh, three years I'm trying to get this world championship I don't get, but this year I hope I make it and uh, I'm so happy. Grand Prix runner-up Paulo Nunez, third place goes to Alexander Kuramshin. Great first Grand Prix result for Ali Abdel Jalil in fourth, beating two veterans Mariani and Kamer Lengo, and the third place for him in the first moto. In the year-end world standings, Rashid Al Mullah is world champion, world runner-up is Paulo Nunez and Roberto Mariani of Italy finishes the year on the podium in third, just ahead of Kuramshin fourth, Camarlengo fifth and then Abdel Jalil, whom we will hopefully be seeing more of in 2019. Moto3, this is the ultimate race of the year where the 2018 world title will be decided. 
With the first two motos under his belt, Jeremy Perez is closer than ever to a first world title, but he knows Yusuf Al Abdul Razak could still snatch it from his grasp if he were to make any mistakes. Uh, basically, I have to be in front of Jeremy. He has to be fourth place. And uh, if I'm behind him, I want to pressure him to make him, you know, try to pressure him to do a mistake or, you know, push his engine a bit more. And I hope I get uh, the win. There was drama just before Moto3 when Yusuf Al Abdurazak had to dislodge plastic from his ski's impeller, nearly unable to make it in time for the race, but he managed to fix the situation with minutes to go to Moto3. The final race of the year, Moto3, Jeremy Perez in pole, an 11 point lead going into the race. Great start from the Frenchman as he leads the field of riders to the whole shots. As Perez leads the field into the alternate course, he picks the blue track, Al Abdul Razak going for the green. All Al Abdul Razak can do is try to win the race and see what happens with Perez. Behind Al Abdul Razak, it's Wu Ronghua in third, Roberto Alexander fourth, then Jan Jensen fifth, then Lorenzo Benaglia sixth, ahead of Christoph Augustinho. In the alternate course on the first lap, Al Abdul Razak gets past Jeremy Perez. Good move, but Perez knows he can't push it and risk a breakdown. He just wants to ride steady and see the race through, but he has to stay in the top four at least if he's to clinch the world title. In third behind Perez and Al Abdul Razak is Chinese rider Wu Ronghua. Tough break for Agostinho. He is black flagged and DQ'd out of the race. Lars Ackerblom is climbing up the field, passing Lorenzo Benaglia in the alternate course as a Swede moves up 14 positions into fifth. Great racing from Ackerblom, who's on track for a year-end podium, racing with his standard 100% effort. Going into lap five, Al Abdul Razak maintains his lead, but Perez is still behind him, not letting third place Wu Ronghua get near him, playing the percentages now as he just tries to see the race through to his first world title. Lars Ackerblom continues his brilliant run in Moto3, setting his sights on Jan Jensen, and the Swede overhauls the Dane. Ackerblom passes Jensen. Bad break for Wu Ronghua. He was on track for a best ever UIM ABP Moto finish, but it was not to be. The Chinese rider is out of the race. James Bushell trying to overcome his spate of breakdowns and finish a Moto as he gets past Jan Jensen as well. The British rider moving up into fourth. But once again, a cruel blow for Bushel. His race again cut short with engine problems. That puts Jan Jensen back up in fourth. Behind him in fifth is Lorenzo Benaglia, whose consistent racing in Sharjah may put him on the podium if he can hold his position here after two fifth place finishes in the previous motos. Riding in second behind Al Abdul Razak, Jeremy Perez can taste the world title now. Just riding steady, making no mistakes, trying to bring his ski home in one piece. The defending world champion Yusuf Al Abdul Razak wins Moto3. He did his best, but there's a new world champion now, Jeremy Perez. The Moto3 runner up is the 2018 UIM ABP world champion in Runabout GP1. It's been 10 years in the waiting, so many close calls, so much hard work, patience, and frustration, but he's finally done it. Jeremy Perez, world champion. What a race for Ackerblom, finishing third, and that gets in the year and third place behind Perez and Al Abdul Razak. Moto3, fourth place goes to Lorenzo Benaglia. Fifth place, Polish rider Andrzej Wisniewski. Sixth place goes to Frenchman Patrice Pellier. Then Marcus Schick, seventh, and Samuel Johansson, Anthony Radetic of the US, and Frederick Brandau of Germany complete the top 10 in Moto3. With two moto wins and a runner-up finish, Jeremy Perez is the Grand Prix of Sharjah champion. Al Abdul Razak is Grand Prix runner-up and Lorenzo Benaglia's consistency earns him his first Grand Prix podium in years, edging out Ackerblom in fourth, Wisniewski finishing fifth overall. Perez back on the pontoon celebrating his win and he's congratulated by former world champion Teddy Pons, to whom Perez was runner-up in 2014. What a fitting end to this fairy tale season for Perez. I take the lead on the start, and uh, after I saw that uh, if I leave uh, Yusef past me, he was in half. I leave him go, and uh, I do myself my, my race. Uh, I feel so happy. My first uh, world champion. I'm so happy. Uh.
And there it is, the 2018 year-end world standings. Jeremy Perez, 2018 UIM ABP world champion with 156 points. Yusuf Al Abdurazak, world runner-up with 150 points. And Acker Blom caps off a great year with another year-end podium ahead of Georgie Kasha and Johan Johansson finishing fifth. That concludes another exhilarating season for the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship. See you in 2019.